Hi everyone, I'm Christy Strau and I am the money coach for artists. This is <laughs> how you can find me at my website and also on Instagram. I help artists and creatives make money, figure out how to make money and also how to get their art into the world and not in that order either. My guest today is Holly Ostara, which I'm so psyched about. All right, so let's invite you on. Here's, there she is. Hi. 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 So let's see how this looks. Yes, it looks perfect. This is Holly's website. We'll be talking about what Holly does for work, but just to start this out, this is your website. We want to send people there. So Holly. Easy. Here's, there she is. Hi. 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 So let's see how this looks. Yes, it looks perfect. This is Holly's website. We'll be talking about what Holly does for work, but just to start this out, this is your website. We want to send people there. So Holly, <laughs> thanks for doing this. Yeah. You are, Super you are an author. You write, so tell us what you write, and then I want to talk a little bit about your day job and how they work together. Sure, I've got, um, I write a couple different things. I write LGBT romance under a pen name, mm -hmm. and I also write what I like to call feminist fantasy fiction. <laughs> oh, that's very cool. Feminist yeah. fantasy fiction. Mm -hmm. so what's, so, what is that? Uh, it's contemporary fiction and um, it's adult fiction, I don't write YA, and it is stories that are told from a feminist point of view, maybe um, experiences that uh, people have that I don't always see represented in, in fiction myself. So I write the stories I would wanna read, basically, and it's a less focus on romance and more focus on saving the world with your own power. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting focus. I'm a huge fan of romance novels. I've read hundreds of them probably. And I don't want to get too detoured off this, but what's important about writing romance? Oh, I love romance. So I, I write romance under a pen name and I just try to keep them separate um, yeah, because they fulfill smart. two different things that I enjoy in different mm -hmm. ways. But the, I don't know, what's important about, what's important about romance is it's such a human condition to to love and to want to love yeah totally <laughs> and and it's just it's something that it feels good to read and it can help you exp it can help you deal with issues that you're having in your own life in that area just mm -hmm. by having giving you a little escape and it can just make you feel good when you don't want to do anything else yeah and it's also, <laughs> I read romance a lot right now because things are so chaotic. And it's a nice it's, escape. It is a nice escape. And, it, and people get, everyone makes fun of this, but they get, they get their happily ever after. Yeah. And I, I realize that's not, you know, that's not how real life works all the time, but it's really nice to see something, especially a good romance novel. I'm going to go buy some of yours. The romance is, there's a lot of conflict and it's fraught and the conflict right. is resolved. Right. And that can be, it can be really empowering to read that, especially right now when, when a lot of us feel like we don't have um, any power to resolve anything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen. So your day job, I know, because we've talked about it in um, the context of my own books, is helping other authors get their work into the world. Can you talk about that a little bit? Mm -hmm. well, I actually have two day jobs, so I have that. And with that, I, I help people who want to self-publish but are maybe not um, as techy as mm -hmm. they need to be to get mm -hmm. that part done. I help them get their books published onto Amazon. And uh, if they want, we, we do wide distribution for you know, Ingram's, through Ingram Spark to get into yeah. Barnes & Noble, iTunes, things like that. Yeah, that's my website. Yeah, so, so I'm just going to hold this with... up while you're talking. So if Thank somebody's you. listening who wants help getting their self-publishing their book, this is how, how they can find you. Perfect. Yeah. So um, once your book is written and you feel like you're ready to get out, get it out in the world, that's where I come in. 
and uh-huh. I help you get it up on Amazon. I help you find the right categories and keywords so that we can get it in front of the right audience. And yeah. I help you write um, a book description that will appeal to people that read that <clears throat> that genre so we can get it in front of the right people and it spark their attention. Yeah. And we get you published. Yeah. So what's, how, how does your art, how does your writing and your day job, how do they influence each other? Hmm, that's a good question. So I started writing first, and and then yeah. when I started publishing, I I realized how, how it was kind of a steep learning curve. So um, it was. <laughs> yeah. So I how many years ago was that? That I started writing. How many years publishing? Yeah, or that you started to get stuff published. I published my first book in 2018. And okay. I actually am editing that one. I'm going to re- re- write the ending to that and republish it. But I published it uh, in 2018. My goal was <clears throat> to have my first book published by the time my daughter was born. Uh, and um, I got it published the month after she was born. So good it was work. Close. Yeah. So the, there's a steep technical learning curve. I kind of interrupted you. So that you, you wanted to get your own work out there, and you saw that the learning curve was pretty steep. What made you mm-hmm. want to help other people? I have a, a lot of friends who publish, too, or who were wanting to start writing and publishing then. And, and, um, and just teaching them about the process, it, I realized that there was a lot of people who could use that help. Totally. Yeah. And, um, it's so, and how it ties back into my my writing, um, I've just, I've met a lot of people through it Mm -hmm. and through my writing. So they kind of, um, I meet people from one who become friends in other ways and and then end up becoming, um, people that I bounce ideas off of, or they bounce ideas off of me. So it's grown my, my network of, of writer friends, which is super invaluable because writing can be very isolating. Yes. Yes, it can. And if, uh, you're probably not, one of those people like I am, who's an extrovert, who's a writer. It's, uh, it's really hard. I have to, I have to write and I can't do this right now. I have to write at Starbucks sometimes so I don't get lonely. (laughs) Yeah. Especially right now. But, um, I, I'm one of those weird ambiverts where. Oh, you can do both. One way, 49% the other way. It depends on the day. Yeah. So I have days where I I love sheltering in place and days where I'm also losing my mind. Yeah. Well, I'm mostly losing my mind. I can shelter in place for about, you know, two days and then not good. But it's teaching me a lot. It's teaching me a lot about what's important and what's not important. Do you have trouble or how do you balance your writing with your day job? It's it's always a struggle. I feel like it's one of those things that you have to reevaluate every day. And I always have I also have a toddler, so Yeah. So what I'm able to get done in a day is not necessarily up to me every day. <laughs> That's probably Which, true. I mean, as a creator, when you, you wanna have control over your creative process, that can be that can be really, really frustrating. So it's just something that in the past two years I've learned to work with and go with the flow a little bit more and sometimes I just make plans to take time to do this one or make plans to do this and I just kind of block out time Mm -hmm. and it's not a perfect system um, but I don't think anything is a perfect system when you have a toddler so even when you don't have a toddler there's not a perfect system yeah and right now especially for me at least the creative juices do not flow during coronavirus i don't know if anybody else is having this issue but you would think we've got nothing else to do all we all we have time to or can do is you know sit at home by ourselves and write and and yet this is the probably the hardest i'm having to work to find creative creative ideas that i've had to do in a long time that makes sense might need to rephrase that no i get what you mean yeah it's hard right now what are you doing in response? Um, I work, uh, I have a co-writer that I write my uh, LGBT novels with, and um, we bounce ideas off each other a lot. And we're constantly helping each other um, kind of brainstorm when we get stuck or work through um, blockages together. And having somebody that you feel comfortable with and who you enjoy talking about their work and they enjoy talking about your work with is... I think one of the, the best things that you can have 
as a creative person in general. Absolutely. Yeah, it absolutely is. Do you, uh, you know, there's people talk about such a thing as writer's block, and I probably have had that, I guess, maybe. Do you feel like that's what you're in the middle of right now? Or is it some, is something, you know, sometimes it's good to not, it's like something's working in my unconscious yeah. that isn't ready well, to come out. So what do you think's going on? That's a good question. So I'm one of the, uh, one of those people, uh, perhaps weird who I don't believe in writer's block really. I'm not, yeah. I, I, I recognize that sometimes there's, it's hard to write, but I don't necessarily think that it's writer's block. It's more like, um, you just don't feel like it and you have to get into the mood to feel like it because if you're not feeling like it, then of course your brain is not going to be thinking about your story or whatever creative thing you're trying to make. It's, it's going to be thinking about Netflix or, you know, <laughs> doom scrolling your phone or whatever. <laughs> but yeah. if, you, if you don't feel like writing, then you're not going to have the creative feels to, to be able to write. So in, instead of writer's block, I would say that I have less motivation to write sometimes because of the state the world is in. <laughs> you know, yeah. we're all sick to death of being inside. And I think I have like current traumatic stress disorder right now. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, it's not conducive to a creative flow. And you just have to kind of sit down and force yourself to work through it. Yeah. And, um, and then what, I just kind of accept that the first 15 minutes of me trying to write or do anything creative are just, it's me getting into the mood. There's nothing going to happen. I have to sit there and get through that first 15, sometimes 20 minutes before I can actually make creative things happen. So that's a nice peaceful way to go about it. Just lower your expectations. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a friend of mine said that, you just have to make peace with a blank page. And I thought that was mm -hmm. the most insightful thing I had heard in a yeah. long time. Yeah. What's your advice when you are working with writers about getting their books finished? Well, they usually come to me after they're finished. Um, but those that haven't, I would say um, it sucks, but you just have to get, you just have to sit down and do it each day. And I don't do it each day. I would say I do it. I would, do it three times a week because I don't want it to start feeling like a chore or something I'm obligated to do. Mm -hmm. But I know that some people focus better when they do seven days a week because then it becomes a habit. Yeah. And I say, find your, your, your habit or your schedule and, um, and stick with it because if you don't, it's just like the words don't happen. If you don't sit down, plan an hour and then plan to waste the first half. Yeah. Yeah. And don't feel bad if you do. Yeah. Well, it's a, well, your website says this. I'm going to hold it up one more time. It's an alchemical process creating stuff. Yeah. And yeah. we have influence, but not complete control, I don't think. Yeah. It, it's not a science. It's an art. Mm -mm. And everybody makes art differently. Yeah, it's true. It's true. We all do make art differently. We have a few people watching us, so I'm going to give them an opportunity to ask questions if they have any. But in the meantime, who describe who you love working with the most in your day job? I love working with people who are really excited to get their book out into the world. They are they they know that they want to self publish they are um, because I do self publishing I help you with self publishing um, and if you're not sure if you want an agent or you want to try to get an agent then it's we're probably not a good fit so yeah. you need to be excited to self publish excited to get out there and promote your book excited to see what you can do and be ready to accept um, that it's it's a tough process to yeah. publish your book and to and to get it in front of people. Um, I just really love working with people who are excited and um, ready to go. Um, I work predominantly, well, actually not anymore. I do both nonfiction and fiction publishing. So mm. um, if you write nonfiction or if you write fiction, um, I can help you with either one. Yeah. And you started out just with fiction, I assume. 
Yeah. yeah, what made you branch into nonfiction? Um, someone came along that needed nonfiction help, and, um, and I had helped them at the time. It's a different process for publishing. I mean, um, well, not for publishing, but I also help people with category and keyword research and writing the description. Yeah. And descriptions are definitely different for nonfiction than fiction. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it was just a little bit of a, a learning curve for me there. And... And each book is different, so it's always a little bit of a learning curve, really. Yeah, it always is. What this is one of the this is the clickbait question. <laughs> what is the one thing that a self-published writer needs to do to help their success in getting their book into the world? You have to market it. Yeah. And and this is one thing that I think a lot of people are surprised by when they self-publish because um, it used to be that you could put in a book on Amazon and, um, and it would just sell, especially if it was um, a romance book or mm -hmm. um, a fantasy or sci-fi book, which are big seller categories, but it's not quite that easy anymore. And so you have to be ready to get out there and build your email list and, um, market your book in there's lots of ways to market i won't go into all those but yeah. you should plan to spend as much time marketing your book as you spent writing your book mm. and for people who have spent a year writing their book that can be really daunting <laughs> but it can take that long for you to build up that slow burning fire that will keep yeah. your book sales sustained yeah exactly and i think if i keep for me as a writer if i keep the person i'm trying to help or reach in mind then it doesn't feel so much like marketing, you know, or flogging mm -hmm. some product or something. It feels more like a relationship. Exactly. Yeah. And especially for people who are writing nonfiction books and you know that the book you're writing is going to help somebody. Yeah. It's not selling. It's helping. Yes. Oh, that's, did you, did you invent that? I didn't make that up. <laughs> I can't, I can't claim that. Yeah. It's, it's really good. But you know, fiction's like that too. Fiction helps in a different way. It does. Yeah. So, and I know that, you know, some days all you want to do is just live in somebody else's world. So yeah, fiction definitely can, can take you somewhere else for a time being. And, yes. um, and so that's also helping. Yeah. Yeah. It is totally right. helping, especially lately. So I'll hold this up one more time. This is how you get in touch with Holly. If you need to, or you want to do the work, to get your book out into the world, Holly is your woman to help you with this. Thank you so much. I'm Christy Stroud, Thanks, Christy. my coach for artists. It's so great to talk to you. Thanks, Holly. Bye. Bye.